Good afternoon and Happy New Year and welcome back to the National Urban League's Digital Career Success Series brought to you by the Urban League Jobs Network. My name is Jody Brockington and I am your host for today as I have been for a while but keep bringing you some great guests, some information that you truly need to really be successful in your career. Today's topic is press start on your career. We always want to start things fresh. We have resolutions we make. We have goals we want to hit, things we want to do. But sometimes we need some guidance. And sometimes, you know, we want to go to the left and we end up going to the right. Things come unplanned. But at least if you have a plan, you have something to reflect upon and really use as a guide. There's no, no wrong plan because it's yours. Today, we have with us Joe Ann, who goes by Joe Rencher. She is founder and an author of, she has her own organization that she will tell you about, and an author of Tough as Nails, which is how I know her, because I've been, I've been following her on LinkedIn. So I've made her yet another FOJ, friend of Jody. Um, she has a plethora of background in HR, um, herself being in it, in leadership of it, and also we brought her to you guys today because her passion is truly helping others reach their level of greatness. She's worked with iconic brands and startups and major um, companies and organizations such as American Red Cross, Girl Scouts of the USA, which is where I actually think I first met her. I went back into my own mindset and Solidex. I think that's where we might have crossed paths. Um, but today, she's really here to help you press start on your career. I know we're almost most of the way through this month, but January tends to be a month where people are still kind of getting things together. We had some things already planned out, and then we push forth into February, which is Black History Month for many of us. Um, and so today, she's really going to talk to you and help you get a plan together to make this year even better than you imagined. So, Joe, thank you so much for joining us. We are a pleasure to have you with us today, and this audience will be definitely wowed as we were going through your presentation ahead of time. Joe? Thank you so you. much. Thank you so much, Jody, and and to the entire team there at, at NUL and the Jobs Network. It's just it's a it's a real privilege to be part of this kicking off of 2019. I wave hello to everyone in virtual webinar land. I think the only few things I'd add about who I am would just be to say that that sentence, um, helping people to get to their next level of greatness, means a lot to me. You know, I've done that. I've had the privilege of doing that for you know some major iconic brands, some lesser known brands in a startup environment, uh, nonprofit consulting firms, my own consulting. But the one theme, that one thread that has run through all of those experiences, is the ability to come alongside someone or a group of someone's and an, an entire organization and say, how can we make this better? How do we get to that next level? I consider myself to be a business leader first and an HR leader second, because I like to immerse myself in organizations, projects, initiatives to figure out how we can come to the right solutions. How do we transform an organization? How do we, how do, we do change management in one organization, which might be completely different than in another? How do we solve really big, th thorny, difficult problems? That's what I love to do. Um, I'm currently uh, doing that now, continuing to learn and to grow because I consider myself a lifelong learner, um, just trying to live on purpose and with purpose. But I, I get to do that now independently for WGN and HR consulting services. And the beauty of that is not only working with other organizations, uh, from time to time, but working with individuals as a coach, one-on-one -on -one and in group settings and really helping, again, helping people, as I say in my book, to find their voice, to find and to use their voice in ways that they may not have expected to kind of really stretch and grow and to reach their potential. So that's who I am. That's what I love to do. That's what kind of oozes out of me. And that's honestly what I wish I would have gotten maybe 10, 15, 20 or so years ago in my own career kind of like a, a a Joe coming alongside me. And that's what I try to be for other people. So um, I'm happy to share 
more about that, but I can't wait to dig in and get, get into the meat of this presentation. So let's go. Renew your career. So I'm, I'm now on this slide where we're talking about um, sort of the before you press start, the before button. You know, we, we, we think about a button as start, go, let's get at, let's get at it, right? But what happens before you press start? Who are you when you show up to the workplace? What, what motivates you? What are the things that um, sort of make you tick specifically, individually? You know, if people were, at, were describing you, would they, would they describe you as more confident or cautious? Would they look at you and think, wow, you know what, she's really, or he's really analytical and, and very detail oriented, or would they see you as more big picture first and then sort of impulsive and creative? To, you know, how do you get described and how, you, how comfortable are you with that description? I say in my book that if, unless we take the time to really understand who we are, everyone else's whims and behaviors and you know, decisions, performance reviews, all of those things will start to define who we are if we don't really know who we are. So take, take that time to really understand who you are first and foremost, because how you show up to the workplace and how you understand yourself in those very specific ways gives you a sense of what ignites your passion versus, as I say on the slide there, your pout. You know, you don't want to be dragging from day to day and situation to situation, uh, workplace to workplace, just kind of going through the motions. You want to live on purpose and with purpose, as I, as I said a few moments ago. I honestly believe that every one of us, every one of us has a specific purpose. There's something or, or a bunch of some things that we were called to do and designed to do to make a difference in this world while we're here on earth. I really believe that. And I also believe that it can't be counterfeited. My purpose is not your purpose. Your purpose is not the, another person's purpose beside you. It can't be counterfeited. It can't be duplicated. And it also can't be stolen without your express permission. It is your purpose, what you were designed to do with your motivations, your beliefs, your talents, your skills is yours and yours alone. And until you take the time to really ask yourself that question and sort of you know, understand yourself and see what motivates you, you're really, again, gonna to be tossed to and fro based on someone else's, someone else's decisions and opinions of you. And if you take too long to ask yourself that question, the answer is gonna become irrelevant. And I'll say this, if you answer that question too soon and you sort of just jump at the next opportunity and you're sort of chasing what's in front of you, your career is gonna become more sort of uh, something that happens to you as opposed to something that you own and shape and drive and lead. And you, you will come, unfortunately, I really believe to regret some of the decisions that you're making. It's sort of gonna be like a lot of stops and starts. You know, like when you're in a remix situation, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. But you know, when you start and you stop and you're going back and you're going forward, your, your career is gonna start to feel like that if you don't take the time to really ask yourself that question. So I'm not belaboring the point without specific purpose. I really would love you to, to pause and to reflect on that before you start talking about pressing start on your career. Let's press start on the next slide. That's about tips and takeaways once we've taken the time to reflect. Now, this is an acrostic. It, it's, it, it um, spells out the word renew. And I'm gonna dig into the tips and the takeaways very specifically that are part of that acrostic and, and what each one of those letters represents. But just pause and think about what renew means. Okay, this is January, what is this? January 23rd, um, 2019. Even saying 2019, you think about, I don't know if you're, whoever's old enough on this call, on this webinar to think about the Jetsons back in the day when you had the, the cartoon and you thought about space age. And when you said, if you said that were the number 2019 back then, it would sort of be like, whoa, wait, 2019, there must be cars flying through the air. That's, that's a place that we're in right now, right in this moment. And so the question is, as you've entered 2019, what does that really mean to you? What's your future? 
What is, what is it that you are pressing a uh, sort of a reset button on perhaps? What's your blank slate as you think about where you are right here, right now? What's your new beginning? And let me just say something to you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. The person that's multitasking, the person that's thinking about what they're gonna have for lunch or that problem that they might've been facing earlier this morning. And so, all right, let me just click on this webinar and see what this thing is all about. I want you to stop. Don't do that. Be all in. You are the most important thing right now. You are the top priority. So be all in as we go through these next um, five tips and takeaways plus a bonus. Be all in. Don't multitask. This is for you. This is your January 23rd, 2019 moment. Let's get into it. Reflect. Reflect on the year now behind you. Let's think about that for a few minutes. Okay, so 2018 is gone. Um, there were some decisions that you made and some things that you, you're not gonna get back. Uh, what worked for you? What didn't? What did you learn about yourself in 2018? What were some of the things that you spent your time in? If you're in a job right now, where did you spend some of your time and some of your energy um, in 2018? What were some of the skills and uh, projects that you worked on and that you that you used and honed a lot of? And what are some of the skills that you may not have used at all? You may not have actually worked a particular muscle at all. Think about that. And why was that? Was that on purpose or was that just sort of by default based on the situation you were in? What are some areas where if you're in a job search and you're in between jobs, where you really wanted to sort of dig in and, and you wanted to look for a particular job in a particular area, in a particular field, um, and you were zooming in on that. And how did that work for you? What job search strategies did you employ? Or did you employ any job search? Was your job search strategy just throw the spaghetti up against the wall, see what sticks? Was it the spaghetti strategy? Maybe now it's time to really think about something more strategic and surgical and calculated and methodical. You know, I, I need to be very focused in the particular company or organization that I target. You know, maybe now I want to be um, specific about the function, the functional area or the role that I focus on. And I want to go after that with more intentionality. And I want to build a, a, a network of people around me that can help me get there. Maybe I need to be more intentional. Or And did you go it alone? Ask yourself that. Was it just you, you, and you thinking about that next move or that next promotion or that next um, maybe career shift? Or, or, or maybe now it's time to not just go it alone and to have a network of people around you, to have what I like to call a little kitchen cabinet. It doesn't have to be a formal group of people but a kitchen cabinet of people that can kind of just be alongside you to give you some advice, um, sometimes to vent, but to help sharpen you. And I will say this, think about that circle of people and influencers, not just as some people that you can take from as you reflect on the year behind you and you look at the new year, but think about yourself sort of like as a cup. When you have a cup, what's the way to actually fill it up? you got to pour out, right? You've got to pour out. So think about sharing and, and of your time, your talent, your treasure, your contacts, your, your, your own network with other people. Don't just think about it in terms of taking and, and, and getting and, and, and what you can acquire, but think about giving so that your cup can be full, full to overflowing so that you have to keep pouring it back out. Reflect on how you've done that la uh, last year and think about doing something different this year. But also think about your non-negotiables. In the in my new book, um, Tough as Nails, Finding Your Voice as a Woman in the Workplace, I think, and this is for men as well, I talk about the concept of having goalposts. You know, when you're negotiating, for example, a, a salary or you're thinking about moving to a new role or a new functional area, if you don't have that blue sky salary number, as well as that um, sort of floor, which is like, I can't go beneath this. There's no way I can take anything less than this, or I don't want to negotiate beneath this number. If you don't have those goalposts, they will move based on your situation. And, and you'll wake up and you'll say, boy, that's not where I really wanted to be. So have those goalposts, those non-negotiables as I describe them. But non-negotiables are not just money. They, they, it could be that it's a, you're in a place 
where flexibility might be really important to you. Um, maybe you have an elderly parent. Maybe you're part of the sandwich generation where you've got younger kids and you've got elderly parents and you've got to figure out how to carve out the time that works for you in any career. Maybe getting home at 6.30 every evening is, is, is really, really important to you. Not just nice to have, but it's a must have. Or maybe the, the, the work-life balance, balance that you're after is something that you really want to draw a stake in the ground around and not move it. Reflect on the year behind and think about what is, is um, your stake in the ground as you go through 2019. Engage strategically as you think about what's next. You know, part of what gets in our own way at times is, is us. <laughs> it's our own decisions. Um, in my book, I reference this, but there's a great book uh, uh, by an author called Greg McEwen. I hope you're taking notes on, on all of what I'm saying. Um, Greg McEwen and his book is called Essentialism. Um, you should see my copy. It's like marked up, dog-eared. I mean, I go back to it over and over again. It's Essentialism, the Disciplined Pursuit of Less. And he talks so eloquently and in such plain and simple terms about how we clutter up our own lives because we give away our power to choose and our decisions as to what we will and won't do and how we spend our time everywhere in our work life. You know, is it every email that comes across your inbox with the exclamation mark? Like, oh my gosh, this is a must answer email. Is it every coworker that, you know, is demanding your time and attention, even if it's not advancing your personal agenda or your your ball is not moving forward, being moved forward, but you're responding all the time. Maybe it's a bossy sibling. Maybe it's a parent that likes to guilt you into showing up at every event. I don't know. I'm not just talking about myself. I know that. Um, or maybe it's, you know, a, a child that might be spoiled that you might have to say no to. Maybe it's too much food. Maybe, oops. Yeah, maybe it's too much food. Maybe it's binge watching. Okay. Yeah, I know I'm getting close to home on some of these things. Maybe it's just whatever it is to you and you need to write that down, isolate it and say, no, this in 2019, I need to stop doing so much of blank. You fill it in and declutter and get, get your own self out of the way and start to own the decisions around where you spend your time. Dreaming big with deadlines. I love that. Um, I, I thought about that years ago. There's a story that goes with it um, that we don't have time for, but oftentimes we think about dreaming big in such big, audacious terms. And that's a wonderful thing. I think thinking big is a wonderful thing, but you've got to have deadlines around it. Otherwise it feels so overwhelming. It feels so, um, you know, just unmanageable, insurmountable. It's sort of like, well, that dream is just so out there that I don't even know where to begin. I might as well just think, uh, in smaller terms or shrink my dream. Don't do that. Dream big, but apply deadlines, action steps and milestones, and even actions today that you want to do that will impact tomorrow or next month or next quarter, or by the end of 2019, work backwards. Start with the end in mind. Dream big, but just apply some deadlines to it. Engage strategically as you think about what's next. This one is really important because I, I feel as though we often let people in our mind, into our minds, into our homes, into our um, personal space that don't necessarily need to be there. And it's not always, um, you know, our, our own uh, circle of, of, of friends and family. I'm talking about people that just aren't, don't always have your best interest at heart. They're not, they're not cheering you on. As a matter of fact, there might be the people that are sort of like, mm, I knew that was going to happen. You kind of know who they are around you. Negate anyone and anything that will steal your joy, that will take your peace and will take that, that place of, yes, I can, and I, I, I can move this forward, um, that will steal that from you and have you, have you doubting, have you questioning things that you don't need to doubt and you don't need to question. It's not always a person. Sometimes it's your own voice. I have up on the screen, silencing those insidious voices in your own head. I talk about this in the book. It's chapter 10, I believe, where um, the imposter syndrome is a real thing. It was, I believe, originally called the imposter's uh, phenomenon um, by two doctors, um, Dr. Pauline Clance and um, Suzanne Imes. 
And they came up with this kind of theory that was um, proven sadly over and over again that high achieving women in particular are oftentimes walking around feeling like phonies. They have this kind of self-perceived intellectual phoniness. Well, later research that they did found out that it's an equal opportunity issue. Men, women, you know, all demographics really suf suffer with this. I mean, when you read about people like Maya Angelou, Michelle Obama, um, Jodie Foster, I think I read, and, and um, that's the woman, Kendra Scott, I believe, the fashion designer, accessory founder, CEO, all struggling with feeling like phonies and feeling like what they're doing isn't enough. We all kind of, at some point in time, I believe, have that place in, where we look at somebody else's gifts as opposed to opening up our own and we say, oh, it's better. Uh, what they're doing is better. Well, they sound so, they sound so smart, so much better. Don't look at somebody else's gifts and, and envy and wonder what you can do to get them or how you can sound like them. Look at your own gifts, open up your own gifts. Don't fall victim to the imposter syndrome. I talk in my book about this and I share some antidotes for actually um, kicking those to the curb and really getting those out of your way. Those are the kinds of things that can steal your confidence to go to that next level. And I can't wait to get to the next slide as we talk about some of those ways to do that. Sometimes you're in a place where negativity comes because you just might be in the wrong job. You know, you might be, I mean, maybe it's a job you've worked for and you've, you've spent a lot of time getting and now you realize, you know what, I, I just, I made the wrong call. It's the wrong decision. It's not exactly where I wanted to be. I, I thought it was where I wanted to be, but now I'm here and it's like, it just, it doesn't feel right. And it's like, it, your own brand of special sauce, something that I love to talk a lot about. It's also in the book that it's like who you are and your quirkiness and you know your eccentricities and all the things that make you you, like I said in the earlier slides, it doesn't, it doesn't match your current employer. Or you could be in a place where it's toxic. The culture is toxic. Um, maybe mean girl behavior is, 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 is running rampant in the place or just dysfunctional, backbiting, whatever. It's just not for you. You need, to, you need to make a decision that if you don't move now, um, you might spend so much time and energy having that sap your spirit and your drive and your confidence and your motivation to do something that, different that you won't want to move later and you don't want that to happen. So make the decision to make that change and negate anyone or anything. I don't know what the examples are out there in webinar land, but you know, you know what they are. Um, make a decision to change and to move those things out of your personal space and your personal way of being and doing and operating so that it, you only have room for the things that motivate you to get to your next level of greatness. Embrace new op opportunities um, and think outside. I have, I have their, their box. Sometimes we're, we're, we're needing to think outside of the boxes that other people may try to place us in. Now, that does happen with, with, with um, great frequency. I mean, oftentimes we will find ourselves, you know, like the HR person is supposed to be warm and fuzzy or what else? The finance person, all about numbers. They just get numbers, 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 but they just don't understand the big picture. Or maybe it's the IT person that just loves those, you know, computers and the equipment and the software, but people, not so much. I mean, those are boxes. People came up with those boxes and oftentimes we're the victims of our own boxed thinking or the thinking, the box thinking of someone else that we stay comfortably in. How do you break out, break out of some of those boxes, whether they're self-imposed or not? Well, you can think about transferable skills. If you Googled right now, don't do it now because we're on a webinar, but if you Googled transferable skills, you would find a laundry list of things that you can take from career to career, from job to job, no matter what, things like um, analytical skills, adaptability, uh, what else? Self-management, your ability to manage yourself and manage time, um, teamwork, leadership skills, exceptional communications, creativity. There are very specific transferable skills that you really should double down on and really um, work intentionally to build and to grow and to develop so that no matter what career choice you make, you will be able to take those skills from role to role. And by the way, they may in fact help you to change your career because you may need to sort of 
um, you know, get deeper or more savvy or take a course or um, learn some other functional area in another way. And I'll get to that. But the truth is there's certain skills that you, you need to transfer from place to place that make you more marketable and that make you much, much more of a generalist than a specialist. And those are skills that you really should, should think about um, very intentionally um, developing. That helps you to step outside of, the, of your box, but it also helps you to step into your discomfort zone. And that's the only way to grow. I say in my book that, you know, unless you open yourself up to different experiences and a variety of experiences, your personal growth and development will be stunted. But how do you do that? You, you think about stretch assignments and project work outside of the norm, um, things that just sort of add to your toolkit. In my case, um, in my last full-time role at the Girl Scouts, um, and this is this is so wild when I think about it. Um, so here I am, business leader first, HR leader. Um, you know, I've spent the bulk of my career, you know, doing HR culture change management work, and my boss asks me to take on what? Fund development. She wanted me to serve as the interim fund development director or executive, whatever the title was, because the leadership, there was a gap in leadership. There was a need to um, sort of pull a team together so that the fund development, the fundraising goals could be met so that the pipeline of new deals and new opportunities could be pulled through a lot faster so that we could just be smarter about how we organized ourselves around negotiating and um, deal, do, deal making. Um, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. It took me a lot of a long time. I mean, I could work on the inside or the outside of an organization, but it took me a long time to realize I have that entrepreneurial thing. And so when she said that, I was nervous, but I was like, okay. I put my hand up and I said, yes. And I, I dived in and we met our goal and exceeded it in some areas in terms of fundraising. Why? Because I'm a fundraiser? Because I'm a fund development development ex, um, expert all of a sudden no but because i brought leadership skills i brought team building skills i brought i brought a dynamic to that team and worked with them as partners to say how can we meet our goals and how can we outperform and knock it out of the park so that we shock people you know that's those are the skills that i brought to that and i was also asked to take on work outside of my responsibilities as a as a, a promotion essentially to be in charge of not just talent and culture but property assets the things of the, the places of the girl scouts um, 400 acres the midtown manhattan facility historic institution in savannah so i had to think about increasing investments and marketing and business development opportunities things that i don't normally think about in my day job normally but i had to stretch and i had to grow i had to be uncomfortable but that was necessary in order to get to that next level, in order to be able to say to myself, check, I can do that. So now I can exhale and say, you know what? I can put my hand, in, hand up and put my hat in the ring for some other opportunities. I can think less structured about my role. I can think in terms of career uh, lattices as opposed to paths that are hierarchical. I can think about moving geometrically across different areas and exposing myself as opposed to staying stuck in my specialist mentality. There's some great resources that if you're interested, I'm happy to share with you that I found as I was doing some research for like, how can I help you guys um, around how to build career lattices and think about your career in terms of lattices and getting um, ready for what's next without being so locked into hierarchy. It's possible. Work to win, that's the last one. Um, it's about getting derailers out of your way and trying some, some new approaches. There's so many different ways to think about this, but I'll, I'll share a few. So you have to have a truth teller in your life. Um, I, I do share this in the book as well. Engage your, your truth teller, that person that can um, sort of hold that mirror up to you in a very compassionate, loving, um, but firm and honest way that kind of forces you to just sort of look at yourself and say, hmm, maybe you might want to think about that a little bit differently, Joe, or did you ever consider this? And all of a sudden you're looking back at yourself and you're saying, yeah, I think I might've been, I think I might've been the problem in that area, or maybe I needed to do some things differently or not, or maybe I needed to stand my ground and take, you know, take ownership. I was right about that, whatever. I had lunch with my, co with one of my coaches um, yesterday, I mean, we can talk forever. I can talk. Um, I wasn't always like this. I was an introvert. 
extreme introvert. There's a there's a whole story about that, and I'm a learned extrovert. And and she and I connect and clicked on a on another level immediately. Why? Because she understood that coaching is about the whole person. It's about it's about getting to know the entire individual strengths. Yeah, strengths, weaknesses, areas where you can sort of shine and things that can be done to kind of get out of your own way. But what motivates you and what brings out the best in you means that you've got to get to know the whole person. You need someone like that in your life. As a person of, of faith, I go to God first. Um, on earth, I have coaches that I, I can go to and people that whether they like it or not, I consider my mentor and that I can just sort of pick their brain and, and ask for the mirror. My husband is a beautiful, beautiful representation of that and probably the best in my life. But you need someone like that. And I encourage you to find that person and enlist their help. Make decisions that match up with your motivations. Um, you know, is it that you want more money or that you want um, more self-worth? Are you interested in social impact causes and making a sort of a difference on a broader and more global scale? Or is it really just not about that? You just want to sort of take on the next role that can sort of, you know, meet the budget, um, match the income needs. I don't know what it is. There are no judgment judgments around that, but you need to make those decisions so that you match your career decisions, underlying motivations. And there are ways to sort of experiment and 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 get your yourself comfortable with the fact that you're you're going to fail at some of these things. Failure, and as I say in the book, is it's just a, it's just the elimination of a bad option. You know, when you recognize that you're not perfect, and and this is, has been hard for me. I'll I'll you know, I'm saying as much of this to myself as I am to you. You know, when you recognize that you're not perfect, you're gonna have flaws, and people are gonna see things that just aren't ugly, just aren't pretty all the time, and you're not going to hit the ball out of the park every time, and that's okay, and you get okay with that and you get comfortable with that, it frees you to experiment. It frees you to do maybe some side hustles. I have this um, thing called Pearls from Joe's Journal, and I do the, the video version of that. If you sign up on my website, jo joannrencher.com, I do videos, and the last one that I recorded, or maybe the next, the, the one bef before that, was about um, side hustles. Why do you need a side hustle? Why might you want a side hustle? Um, and when you understand your motivations for side hustles, how do you use, how can you use those to experiment, to maybe pilot a new career? Maybe you can be um, now someone who dabbles and freelances and writes about things that you're super passionate about. Or maybe you can create an app or, I don't know, design a new website or uh, plan an event, organize an event, network, um, pull your network together to create an event that really gives you um, joy and, and fulfills a passion around event organizing. I don't know what it is, but sometimes side hustles are your stepping stone to a new career because they give you an opportunity to pilot, to um, sort of sharpen, get it right, get it wrong, try again. Um, it gives you that opportunity to do the things that you might not be able to do or want to do in your day job. But now the side hustle gives you the um, ability to do that. It's something for you to consider. The point is experiment. Recognize that sometimes when you have extra time on your hands, it's for, for a purpose. It, it gives you a chance to um, dabble in areas that you might otherwise not, to stretch in areas that you might not otherwise try. So experimentation is really important as you think about pressing start on your career, whether it's your current career or maybe a new one. Work to win. Try new approaches. Here's your here's my bonus offering. So along this journey, you will need to to really look back. And now we did a little bit of a look back in 2018. Yeah, we did. But you're going to need to look back a lot as you think about your career. You're going to need to look back at my milestones, baby steps. When did you um, call somebody up or link, uh, you know, write an email LinkedIn message to someone that you did not even know and you got a response? Yay! Celebrate. You know, when did you step into a place of discomfort? Maybe you're not comfortable speaking in front of people. I remember years ago, that was something that would literally make me ill, literally ill. Um, you know, if I held up a glass, I, I just remember this to this day, it would be like this. I don't know if you can see in the camera. 
But those baby steps along the way, they are confidence builders and they are places to celebrate where you say, wow, man, I remember when I was like that. I'm not like that anymore. Celebrate those things. Celebrate every milestone. Celebrate um, something that may have been an opportunity that you turned down where you said, nope, I got my stake in the ground and that's just, it's not for me. I'm going to say no to that. My family said to say yes. My friend said to say yes. You know, a, a colleague thought I was crazy, but I said no because I wanted to get to the right yes. Celebrate every milestone, every stepping stone, and you will be amazed at how far you come when you take stock of those moments. So here's what I want to do now. I want to give away a book but I'd like to give away two books. I want somebody to write to me, and my email is there, that has listened some and heard something today. You heard something that spoke right here. It spoke deeply to you about something that you need to do differently, that you need to think differently about. And you made a commitment in your mind, silently maybe, but you or you wrote it down. I hope you did because you need to make that vision really plain. Um, and now you want to act on it. You want it to be an actionable takeaway. I'm talking to, to that person or that group of people. I'd, I'd love to hear from you. And I'd love to be able to be inspired by you and to learn from you. And I'm sure um, there, there's so much that I can learn, I know, from you. But I want to hear from you about what you're going to do differently and about what actionable takeaway you have gleaned from this webinar. And I'll, then I will take... Uh, one of my books and, and, and send it to you as we um, exchange that correspondence. And, but I don't want you to stop there. Each one, teach one. I know Nelson Mandela said that. I'm not, I'm not sure of the origin of it. I think it might've been him, but it's, we're only as good as what we give away. You know, leaders grow and develop other leaders. They don't just create followers. And so someone is not on this webinar today. You know, someone maybe planned to dial in, but they couldn't, or someone that you know of in your circle might need to hear something that I said or shared, or that was was said and shared, or maybe even, even in the Q&A, and you, you think of that person. I'd like you to specifically think about that person by name and also let me know so that I will give you two books, one for you and one for them. Make a decision to do something different today. Don't just let this be another webinar. This is the start of a new year. It could be a start. It could be a start of a new season in your life. That is possible. Just know I'll be rooting for you. And with that, I will turn it over to our crew at the National Urban League Jobs Network to take it from here. Wow. Well, thank you, Joe. A uh, lot of information every time we do one of these, you know, I consider myself to be a coach and an advisor and all the stuff that you do, but uh, there's always more to learn and things to take on. I think uh, you're going to have quite a few people who have definitely been following you, uh, putting it all in this afternoon uh, with you, um, who hopefully will take your bonus opportunity and get that book. Uh, so. A couple of uh, amen to some things that you were saying. We got some of those. And also uh, a few of the calling people out when you told them if you're multitasking to stop. I'm, I'm sure that that's what that, those comments were. <laughs> Thanks for calling me out. Thanks for calling me on the carpet. And that's really kind of what you were getting at about the truth tellers and, you know, staying focused. And, you know, often we have goals and we go kind of off the path or we kind of forget about something because we are multitasking. Um, so once in a while, even though your focus has been on women, we need to, as they say, act like men and they do one thing at a time uh, or try to multitask and then give up. And so focusing is the key. Um, before we get into everything, I want everyone to know that, yes, the presentation will be available on the Urban League, the National Urban League uh, YouTube channel under the Urban League Jobs Network. So you can review this and share it with other folks. Also, they wanted to know from you, Joe, um, can you please repeat the books that you referred and the authors? You had talked um, about the, um, 
Greg McQueen, The es uh, Essentialism, if you can give the full title of that and the author, and then the two women um, who uh, talked about high-performing women, those two books. Okay. So the author uh, of the book entitled, here's the two-part title, Essentialism, uh, the Disciplined Pursuit of Less. Now, that's the, the book title. Getting into the, getting to the essential few as opposed to the non-essential many. That's basically the theme of the entire book. His, uh, his name is Greg McEwen, M-C, capital K-E-O-W-N, I believe. Um, you'll find him when you Google him. And the two women that were behind a very, very well-discussed and um, almost beaten to death concept now of the imposter syndrome are two doctors um, that are um, have been around for decades now, and I'm not sure they're teaching or or, or working at the moment. They're, they're now very seasoned. I'll, I'll say Pauline Clance, C L A N C E, Dr. Pauline Clance, and then Dr. Imes, Dr. Suzanne Imes, I M E S. Those are the two ladies that are behind this imposter syndrome, imposter phenomenon that gets talked quite a bit about. And when you do some research on it, you'll hear and see that there are people that would shock you to know struggle with this. And, and I shared myself, I think I, I, I may have shared myself, even um, in the writing of this book, I thought about struggling with whether or not it was good enough and had had enough in it. So it's a very important topic to really understand so that you can kick it, kick it to the curb. Great. And one book that I would also add, and I'm sure you've probably read, is uh, Women Don't Ask and Just Ask by Babcock. Um, when you were talking about uh, setting goals and really being clear about, you know, your sky high salary and what you'll accept, um, the research done in both of those are just really good and it makes you think about yourself. And, you know, although we are skewing today a little bit heavier towards our female audience, that this stuff still pertains to men who also take less risk and do not. So the first question um, is, you know, how should non-negotiables kind of be brought up, you know, um, in an interview situation when, you know, I'm all for it. you ask certain questions that will kind of get you an answer, right? You'll know if the person before you work from home three times a week, then you possibly can work remotely. But, you know, when do you use them? How, what kind of questions do you ask during the interview? And then let's say you get the job offer. When, you know, when do you bring up those non-negotiables? And not so much that you say that it's a non-negotiable, but when do you kind of use that power? Your Great advice? question. Um, so here are a couple of thoughts. One is, I, I really encourage and implore you, do a tremendous amount of homework on that organization, on that company before you step, set foot in the door or, or pick up the phone on a phone interview so that you really have an understanding based on um, Glassdoor ratings, uh, how their website reads and the kind of look and feel of it whether or not they have testimonials from some of their employees on there, you get a real sense of what that company stands for and what they believe in. And you can then make some really informed decisions about moving forward in the process. So that's number one, do your homework. I cannot overstate that. Um, in the interview process, so let's, uh, one, one point to make around how you present yourself and sort of get in, so let's say you've done your homework and you feel good about what you've heard and, and you wanna move forward. You're not, you're not um, articulating or expressing at all your non-negotiables at the moment. You're, you are hopefully having a sense that you're probably fairly aligned with this company, maybe, but you can test it. One of the things that you really have to be mindful of is that you wanna get your foot in the door. And so um, put the non-negotiable list off to the side momentarily and, and put your best foot forward so that you rise to the top as the very best candidate. So much so that they might want to bend some of what they, you know, might otherwise be steadfast about or non-negotiable about with others because you're you're just that good. So concentrate on being just that good on the interview and in the process of interviewing. And once you get in the door and you're now in the interview process and you're talking to um, what might be your peers, 
or uh, uh, prospective peers, other colleagues, not just your immediate manager and your boss. Um, make sure that you can ask those questions, even in indirect ways around what they, you know, give me a sense of the culture, who are the types of individuals that succeed in this organization, um, what doesn't work here. Ask the kinds of questions that can eliminate the, uh, you know, the data points for you to, to let you know what you're left with. And then finally, when you're in, in an offer stage, make it to have that list in front of you and to just be very clear about the things that, you know, you want to discuss not only in, in terms of salary, but uh, flexibility. But you've got to be sure that you are truly the candidate that they can't say no to or that they would be, you know, foolish to say no to. Because then your non-negotiable list um, looks a lot more negotiable to them. Ah, see, said it better than I could. I love it. You know, it's just the idea that those non-negotiables, it's just like dating. Like, you know, there's things that you will or will not tolerate from your boss and employer, things that you don't want from anyone, but you're not going to show all your cards and give your hand out. But, and then you'll realize, oh, well, if I want to work from home and they don't, that's their no work from home policy, then that's not a place for me. Or we were talking about earlier, Joe, that, you know, I don't like to dress up very much, but I will when I need to. So when I choose an environment, I need to know that it's a little bit more casual. I might have to dress up from time to time, right? So choosing that better environment, the better culture versus just the job or industry. Um, you mentioned that, um, you know, reaching out to people on LinkedIn, which is one of my favorite tools um, in this whole maze of career journeys. Um, you know, that you might not even know, you know, I always say, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people hit connect and pray that someone will get back to them. Um, I always say, go that one step further, write a little note, how you met someone, why you think they might be important, but you might have some other tactics and, you know, what to exactly say, if it's a job search and a career situation, um, someone you're looking for a mentor for different reasons. So, um, cause a few people have this question. So, kind of if someone's looking for a mentor, someone's looking for a job, someone likes what they do, um, you know, et cetera. So any advice there? Sure. You know, at the end of the day, it comes down to sort of generosity of spirit from other people, right? Where you know, sometimes we just get busy. It's not a sort of a derogatory statement, but the truth is a lot of people don't always make time for others that they, that they don't know. And it's hard to, and sometimes you have just totally legitimate reasons. And sometimes you just overwhelmed yourself and you can't even, you're, 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 you're under, underwater and there's just no energy, mental space that you have. And so you have to give people some grace around not responding to you because sometimes people are just going through um, and they just are not in a place to respond. I, I really work hard on part of it in my responses to people on total strangers on LinkedIn. Um, because I always put myself in the position of, uh, in the in the seat of being on the other end. You know, like when I was on the other end, or if I'm on the other end, what would I want to hear from somebody? Even an encouraging word is 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 nice and it's good enough. Um, the the simple act of kindness. So I'm, I'm very sensitive to that, and a lot of people are. So when you re when you reach out, speak to that human part of that individual in terms of, you know, I know I know that you might have a lot on your plate right now, and um, I recognize you might not be able to respond, um, but I'm, here's where I am, and I, I, I certainly would appreciate X. Make your make your ask very clear, specific. Don't go on and on and on and force people to have to sift through. Make your ask very specific and sort of appeal to that human side of of um, all of us, probably, where there's a there's a tendency to want to even just share an encouraging word, even if not help itself. And then the other thing I would add is that do your homework on the person before you reach out to them because maybe they wrote an article or maybe they have a book um, or maybe, I don't know, they're doing something that you found out on their website that you might want to reference. People like that. People like to know that you've taken the time to find out more about them before you ask something of them. And so do your homework so that you can reference that in your ask, whatever that might be. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And right on LinkedIn, there is the following button. So someone can follow you without making a connection. You can follow, as Joe was saying, like some things that they're doing. So you have something to actually say um, and talk about. You know, it's not about you at that point when you don't know someone. You got to talk about them no matter what the sign is. 
Uh, so for whatever it's worth, um, the next question is really about, um, you know, and everyone has this and it doesn't matter where you are in your career because it's whether you're in the beginning, the end, trying to leave, trying to retire or find that side hustle, you know, how do you ask a current, uh, you know, ask for a raise from your current job, your current employer, when you've been there for a while, um, you've been, you know, grinding it out, you've been doing great work, but you're not seeing, you know, offering it, you see other people around you getting job offers or raises um, or promotions. So how do you really get prepared? What's the best way to prepare for asking? Um, I love that question. Um, in chapter two of my book, there's a whole section on negotiating for more money. And I'll give you a couple of thoughts about that because it is, it is hard, especially when you're on the inside of an organization and people kind of know you already. So you're not negotiating from a place of lack of familiarity where you have a little bit more boldness some of in in some sense it's actually harder when you're in the organization and so the first step is to remember i talked about those voices in your own head like oh how are they going to see me um i'll get you know i'll be seen as greedy or self-interested you know what you are self-interested and and you may not be greedy but you might need to uh take that step to be able to earn a salary that if you don't ask for it now, will become an opportunity cost. As I, I talk about in the book, it'll become that thing where, you know what, down the road, I should have asked for that amount because now that amount would have given me that much more in my 401k. It might have, it, it will have uh, been part of a benefits package that now I don't have because that amount is less and now the sort of total compensation is less. The opportunity cost of not asking, huge. So get those voices out of your head and focus on the fact that you have every right to ask. Um, if you have done your homework, if your salary is not already above market, because there are times where an, empl an employer employer will know that, you know, that there are compensation structures and e equity concerns that have to be managed and met, and you may not be in, you know, you might be above market. So do your homework around what, what you're worth, pay scale, blast door, uh, there are other, other sources that help you know that. Um, but also make sure that you're aligning your ask with the needs of your employer. So part of being able to be successful in those conversations is knowing what they're knowing what the business needs are. So if you're able to package yourself and to talk about what you bring to the table, putting a value assessment on that is a lot easier because then you're talking their language. This is what I bring to the table. This is how I can help us get to the next level. Um, but it also means that I'd like to get the value for that. So make sure you understand those needs first and foremost, not just your own needs and your own budget and your own calculations, because uh, that's not your employer's problem. It's it's about what you can do for them. I say a lot about this in the book as well, in chapter two. Yes, and, and there is someone who did not mute their phone or has not muted their computer, and we can hear static in the background. If you can please check your computer, make sure that it's on mute or your phone because this information that Joe has for us is very important. Thank you. I can still hear it. Like there's like a, someone in the background in the lunchroom or something. So. I'm myself, so it's not me. Joe, are you okay? Can you hear me? Okay. I can, um, I can. Yeah, and I'm on mute when I'm not speaking. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of your book, you know, you have a theme and a focus for that. Is it something that, you know, someone would keep and be able to keep referencing to, um, uh, you know, is it to use at different stages of your career? Is it at any time, like, you know, people are curious now that we've piqued their, you know, <laughs> piqued their interest? Yes. You know, I wrote the, uh, um, that question is very meaningful for me because I, when I wrote the book, as I, as I was sort of coming towards the end and it was all coming together and gelling, um, mm -hmm. I wanted the book to be written in a way that you could literally read it if you chose from start to finish, whether you were aspiring, uh, mid-level career, seasoned veteran, that you could read it from start to finish and get something out of it, get some nuggets along the way, or you could look at the table of contents and say, you know what, 
I'm in a job loss situation right now in a transition period. And so that really speaks to me. Let me let me dive in and dig in there. Or um, I'm dealing with the toxic culture. Chapter four is really just what I need. What are some of these strategies? So it's written in a way where you can actually do that from start to finish. Or you can actually dive in based on where you are. So it, the book, I really believe it meets you right where you are. And it doesn't matter where you are in your career in terms of, as I said, uh, just out of college or, you know, having worked for 30 years, um, there is something for you in that book. And, and looking at the table of contents, I think um, my hope is that you will agree. And then in terms of your book um, with the giveaway, people are also curious because you did not say this, which is, you know, um, for uh, when does the giveaway end? We know you're only giving away two, but like I said, there's a lot of folks on here that I think would be uh, well qualified. So when does the book giveaway end? And will you, you know, at least let us know here? Yes. So that way we can also make an announcement from the Urban League side, but okay. when are you closing it out? Yeah, so midday tomorrow, Thursday, is when I will close that out because I believe in, in taking action. If, if something has spoken to you and it resonates, you, sh you should want to act on it quickly. So the, those first few people that write to me on um, my email at my email address, address Joanne Rencher at WGN. Oh, actually, there's a typo in there. It's WG. So, so please write this down. WGN in HR. Did you get that? Say w one more time. So W G N N H R. So it's uh, it's it, if if you're curious, it's it stands for who's got next. You know, basketball on the court. Who's got next? W G N N H R dot org. Sorry, Cl Clarissa, I might have given you a typo on that, but I um I I respond to that email address as my kind of my work address, my work email. WGNNHR.org, Joanne Rencher at WGNNHR.org. And the first people to respond to me with the power, most kind of powerful, um, actionable takeaways that they've committed to, and then someone else that they have in mind, a real person, specific person, um, you know, those are the ones I'll be reading first and through noon tomorrow will respond to and choose, you know, can only choose one to get to give those two books to. So the sooner the better, but take action right away because that lets me know okay. that, you know, you're ready. Do they have to uh, tell you about the other person or why they think the other person needs it or just that they weren't on the call? It would be nice to say a little bit more about the other person. It, you know, not that, I mean, this is a... Um, right, we're going no, no, but more or less like my friend has been trying to get out of her job right. for a while. Exactly. And, you know, every time she comes home depressed and we do whatever, that kind That's of thing. That's right. Okay. That sort of thing. A little a real story of why they could use your, your motivation. Exactly. So with that said, too, before we wrap it up here, um, you know, I always want to say uh, and ask, like, you know, um, any last words of advice for those that are on the call about their career journey um, that, you know, one thing, one pearl of wisdom that you'd like to leave them with and something to think about, a quote or something that helps you. Hmm. Wow. That's a good one. There's so many. Um, you know, one of the things I like to think about is the fact that, you know, if we don't believe in ourselves, if we don't truly believe in ourselves, um, we can't expect someone else to, you know, the least we can do is to believe in ourselves. Um, the least we can do is to believe in ourselves because many people will not afford you the same thing. And so I would love to leave you with that nugget, nugget, which is that you are the most important thing right now as you think about your career. And so believing in yourself, investing in yourself, um, spending the energy and the time getting down to the core of who you are is worth it. You're worth it. You're, you're worth it. You're worthy enough uh, you know, to be loved that way. You're special enough um, and important enough to be challenged. And then for those of you on the line, the other action is definitely follow, if not connect with Joe on LinkedIn, but connect with her the way we told you you should try to connect with people you don't know because you just met her today. Go into that note section, an invitation, tell her you are on today's webinar. 
and a little bit about yourself and why you'd like to connect with her. Um, you know, so that way you can stay connected, see her tips, or you can simply just hit follow and follow what she posts on LinkedIn, as well as following her on Twitter. You can also follow me there, um, also LinkedIn. Um, so, and as you grow your business, some of you with side hustle, you know, people manage some parts of your, of my social media. So if there's not a direct connection or, you know, kind of sits there longer, then I can't remember 20 people I met at a, at a, an event or here on a webinar, Joanne has not met you. Joe has not met you. So she doesn't know what you look like or will remember. So you need to remind her. Um, but I do want to thank you, Joe, for being with us today. I think the book is going to do great. Um, and I want everyone on the line to still check out the rest of the Digital Career Success Series. This was our kickoff. So if this is our kickoff, we can only go up from here. And so they, the themes are, you know, starting your business, the future of work, personal branding, networking, everything you need to be successful in your career. Please visit the Urban League's job, the National Urban League's job network, upload your resume, because the folks that are hiring off of our jobs network are definitely looking for people who look and have your expertise. As you can see, visit NULJobsNetwork.com. We have our own site there, and we'll be promoting um, everything that happens with our Digital Career Success Series. And then our goal is to get as many of you to join us this July for the National Urban League um, annual conference, but our career fair is free. So even if you're not coming to Indiana, you got a relative, a friend, maybe there's a job there that you want, it's time for you to check it out and plan now, because if you know where you're going, as Joe said, and you have some goals, you can ship away and put some money away now and join us. And really, um, we make a lot of our digital career success series speakers come and speak live so you can actually meet them. The topics are usually pretty much the same. We go for the hot topics. So if there's also people you want to hear from and topics you want to hear about, we want to bring those to you this year and forever. So thanks again, Joe, for joining us on behalf of the National Urban League, the Urban League Jobs Network, and myself. It was simply a pleasure. The audience today um, definitely are walking away with pearls of wisdom, information, advice, and actual things to do. So do something today. Those of you who are going to go after that job, after the book or the two books for yourself and a friend, you only have till Thursday. So make it hot, make it now, and make it happen. So we look forward to hearing from you again, Joe. If you need us and there's something else going on and you're having an event, please let us know so we can let our network know. And we only wish you the best. Thank you so much. Have a Thank great career so journey for the rest of you. Thank you.